We now return to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute, the radio show discussing the honest truth about Illinois policy and politics. Here's AM 560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Pat Hughes, co-founder of the Illinois Opportunity Project on this edition of Illinois Rising. And uh, we've got elections coming up April 4th. We've talked uh, about local elections here uh, a number of occasions and in a number of communities. And we've talked about the overarching importance of them because obviously your local units of government, starting with your schools, drive your property tax bills, which drive your home value, which drive you out of Illinois. So uh, another interesting example, very much like the Algonquin Township Highway Commissioner race that we talked about in advance of the primary election, where you had a a dynasty there fleecing the public for its uh, personal enrichment as a family, the Bob Miller family that got ousted in Algonquin Township. So you can take on the uh, dynasts and win. Uh, We've got the case of Orland Park and the mayor's race, first mayor's race in a long time there. Dan McLaughlin, the incumbent mayor, has been there for two decades plus, but it's really changed in the last couple of months after the end of last year when McLaughlin and his acolytes on the village board voted to increase his salary by 375 percent from forty thousand dollars a year to one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, which would also increase McLaughlin's pension from thirty thousand dollars a year to one hundred ten thousand dollars a year. Uh, nearly a fourfold increase as well, of course, correspondingly, if he served another term. So if he was reelected and served another term, because that salary is prospective for the next mayor. And it's just an incredible development, uh, an incredible example of hubris of the ruling class. It, at that salary, Pat, the mayor of Orland Park would make more than the mayors of Cleveland, Sacramento, Louisville, St. Louis, Paris, Rome, Moscow. Are those bigger cities than Orland Park? <laughs> I mean, or are those just, which one's bigger? It's it's just stunning. It's stunning. And um, so is the, there an Eiffel Tower in Orland? Park? The co- the, co- the the at those rates. I mean, the question is: Will Orland Park residents? By the way, Orland Park, a majority Republican community. Trump carried Orland Park, for example. Are are they going to stand? For this? I, I suspect they're not going to. My, my guess here, Dan, is you know McLaughlin's been in office for so long. People see him at things. Oh, he's a nice guy. No one's paying too close of attention. I like my life here in Orland Park. It's a nice town. Uh, but if they're made to know, and I know the process is in place, including this show, for them to be made to know that this nonsense is going on and they're being taken advantage of, I can't imagine they're going to want to stand for it. Right. And so there is a challenger. So there's an option because you have to have something to replace something something better to replace something worse. And uh, in Orland Park, they have that. And Keith Peacock is a local businessman challenging Dan McLaughlin for the mayoralty there. And I emphasize LT like royalty with those salaries. Uh, And in the interest of full disclosure, I run an independent expenditure pack, a Liberty Principles pack, which a lot of people know if they listen to my morning show. And my independent expenditure pack is spending on behalf of Keith Peacow in this race. So factor that into our conversation, however you see fit. Keith, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Dan. Thank you. So uh, just, you know, kind of give us uh, your framing on the race, uh, the, the impetus to run and what you see the choice as being uh, presented by you to Orland Park voters on April 4th. So the impetus to run is that uh, our, our mayor and the board decided to give him a pay raise from $40,000 to $150,000 per year. And the impact of that is to increase his pension from twenty-five grand to, if he has one more term, over $100,000 per year. Over a 20-year lifespan after retirement, after one more term, that's over $2.1 million. So that's absolutely unacceptable. When looking deeper into the, in the financials of the village, we've been hearing that there's a balanced budget for 24 years, which, of course, as you know from state law, is required. However, our debt's gone, our long-term debt's gone from $14 million in 1998 to $158 million today, so we've been balancing out a credit card. And on top of that, we've been getting a, uh, a property tax rebate given back to us 
about $150 a year to all the homeowners that apply for it. And essentially, we're borrowing for that. And it shows up early voting week. So essentially, <laughs> we're buying votes with debt. So, so those are the, are the big issues facing the campaign. And, and so, okay, so that's the impetus to run is this kind of ruling class mentality, I would describe it. What's the, what's the choice that you're presenting when Orland Park voters go to the polls on April 4th, you want them to think about this question, and uh, and the answer is Keith Pico. Well, the first thing is fiscal responsibility. So first and foremost, I'm not going to take a pension. The salary has been set in law for the next four years, so there's nothing I can do about it for four years. However, I'm going to push to bring it back to a part-time position like it should be and bring the salary back commensurate to what it, to what it was before, which, had, which was $40,000. So that's first. Second, we have to spend within our means. And it's not that heavy of a lift. It's 5 6% a year. So it's not something that's unattainable. It just requires you to actually dig into the numbers and actually require you to enforce to the village and the village manager and everybody else that we have to spend within our means. So that's first. The second thing is uh, we need economic development. Oil and Park's development has been flat. Our sales tax revenues have grown less than a half a percent a year for the last eight years. And we really need to focus on bringing in new businesses, new uh industries into our uh, into our region. Right now, we're totally focused on retail restaurants and car dealerships because of the um, immediate gratification of sales tax revenue. And because of that, we totally ignore all of the under, other industries that could come in. And we actually have a huge section of Orland Park that's undeveloped along I-80 that is in Will County. So there's a, a huge potential to bring in new businesses, which will you know, help the, help the community grow. So, Keith, so one of the other issues you're talking about, uh, you're not going to take a pension. So that's uh, a couple million bucks in savings to Orland Park uh, families, taxpayers. In addition to that, it also, I think, provides an opportunity perhaps to address another problem in Orland Park that I've identified looking at the books, and that is millions of dollars owed to both the Orland Park police and fire pensions. Shouldn't police and fire your first responders in your community be prioritized ahead of the locally elected politicians? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, uh, myself not taking a pension and um, the, the current mayor not getting one is going to have a significant impact on the pension benefits so that our, that our first responders can receive their pensions. But also, I just really believe that all elected officials should be foregoing their pensions. So hopefully in the future we can do that. But one of the things that I'm going to push for is term limits because if we put in, institute those term limits, none of the elected officials will be there long enough to get these gargantuan pensions. And uh, another interesting story about your opponent, the incumbent, Dan McLaughlin. Uh, South Cook News, which again is one of my papers, uh, but did a little digging. This is all public record, and uh, we're happy to have Dan McLaughlin respond if he'd like to. Um, so he, the property tax levy over the last decade at the by the village and the library has increased by 56 percent and dan mclaughlin at the same time is taking two homeowner property tax exemptions which any homeowner knows you're only allowed to take one your domicile your primary residence he's got two from at least 2017 2007 to 2015 one on his home in orland park and the other on a condo that he owns on the mag mile in chicago um, that's what we call in the business cheating on your property taxes. So at the same time that he's hiking property taxes locally, he's skipping out on his property taxes by improperly taking a second homeowner's property tax exemption. And I wonder if that is also going to be a discussion point in the closing days of the campaign. I don't know how much of a discussion point that, that will be because people aren't really paying attention, but it should, certainly is an issue. Uh, the the uh, the bigger discussion point that has been going on is that he claims that the tax levy's been flat for five or six years, and uh, we're only seven cents on the dollar. Well, if you go back when we ran in 2001, he said the same thing. Our property tax level levy's been flat for five years, and we're 4.4 cents on the dollar. So in between, we've almost doubled our property taxes. So that's unacceptable. Yeah, right. So it's the old kind of, uh, I'm supporting a property tax freeze as I'm holding the line on property taxes, and yet people's property tax bills continue to spiral. So there's a disconnect between what they're hearing from elected officials and what they're seeing in the mail. Correct. With the property tax rebate that they used to give in full the first seven years it was instituted, in 2009 a person paid zero net income tax on a $300,000 home. 
today they're paying three hundred ninety six dollars on a three hundred thousand dollar home. That is not flat in my book. And uh, Keith, uh, for uh, people who want to get more information on your campaign, where can they go? What's your website? They can go to www.keithformayor.com. And Keith. that's Keith, the number four, mayor.com. Keith, the number four, mayor.com. Keith Peek, I'm candidate for mayor of Orland Park. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan and Pat.